And I thought, you son of a bitch. I said, I didn't say that. I said that to myself. I said, well, I said, I am older than you. And from then on, it sort of got into the back of my head that I, that I knew that was a sort of device to keep you off guard so that everything was alive. He just reminded me from the very beginning of Tom Sawyer, a guy who would always get you to paint the fence and get you into the terrible scrapes. But it was all like, well, what's life for? It's not to just go plodding in the same places every day, but it's an adventure. On March 8, 1954, Jimmy leaves New York. With his worldly possessions packed in some paper bags, he boards a plane for California. This will be the beginning of the legend. Where did he come from, innocent and young? Did you need anyone? Somewhere between a boy and a man, James D. Jimmy's first major movie is based on the last third of John Steinbeck's novel, East of Eden. It is the story of a son trying to please his puritanical father who constantly disapproves of him. The father is played by Raymond Massey and the son by James Dean. Their uneasy union in the story is heightened by Dean and Massey's real life relationship. Jimmy's use of profanity is not appreciated by the Oxford educated Massey who is both religious and conservative. And I suggest a little slower, Cal, and you don't have to read the verse numbers. For this shall everyone that is godly pray unto In a scene where Jimmy is made to read the Bible for penance, he angers his father by giving his reading without the proper reverence. Seven. Not the numbers, Cal. Thou art my When the camera is rolling to shoot the father's angry reaction, Jimmy mumbles obscenities under his breath to help motivate Mr. Massey's hostile response. Eight. You have no repentance. You're bad. Through and through, bad. Excuse me. I'll, I'll go out and wait for Abra. Cal, listen to me. You can make of yourself anything you want. It's up to you. A man has a choice. That's where he's different from an animal. I'm sure he respected uh, Raymond Massey, but he was always trying to make Raymond feel upset and flustered. Just for the fun of it. It was Tom Sawyer. In a key scene, Jimmy tries to win his father's approval. What is this? Well, uh, I made it, and it's for you. It's all the money you lost on the lettuce. You made it? Yeah. But how? <laughs> Beans. Beans? You uh, uh, we bought uh, futures at five cents, and uh, war came along, and the uh, uh, price went sky high. So, um, that's for you. And it's all the money you lost in the lettuce business. And that's for you, and I, I made it for you. Cal, you will have to give it back. I made it, I made it for you, Dad. I, I want you to have it. Give it to the farmers you robbed. We didn't rob anybody. That we, we paid two cents a pound, two cents over the market for that stuff. Do you think I could take a profit from that? But I don't want it. the money, Cal. I couldn't take it. I, I thank you for the thought, but I'll keep it for you. I'll, 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 I'll wrap it up and we'll, we'll just keep it in here. And then we'll, I'll yeah, never we'll take it. Move. Son, if you want to give me a present, Jimmy does more than just read his lines. He constantly improvises. When Massey refuses to take the money, Jimmy, according to the script, is supposed to turn and walk away. Cow! 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 
Jimmy's improvisation has turned this scene into one of the screen's most poignant pleas for a father's approval. During Jimmy's time in Hollywood, he will date many beautiful women, including Terry Moore and later Ursula Andress. However, the love of Jimmy's life is Pier Angeli, whom he meets while working on East of Eden. Pier, a beautiful Italian actress who has recently arrived in Hollywood, is working on an adjoining soundstage in a picture called The Silver Chalice. Perhaps we'd been filming three or four weeks and and he said to me, I want to show you something. And, and he uh, pulled out of his pocket a little gold enameled Egyptian charm that you would wear on a chain. And he wore it on his chain. And it opened up and inside was a lock of her hair from the day that they first met. And he, it was, when he showed it to me, he was, so, he was moved to tears and he was, he said he was so happy that he had never experienced anything like this feeling that he felt for her. And there was a kind of warmth and a sort of glow about him, especially when he, when you saw them together or when he talked about her. Jimmy and Pierre are inseparable, but their relationship has serious problems. Jimmy is totally unpredictable and has constant mood swings. Eventually, Pierre breaks off the relationship and to Jimmy's torment, immediately announces her engagement to singer Vic Damone. On the day of the wedding, as Pierre and her new husband leave the church, they are greeted by the loud roar of an engine. Seated on his motorcycle across from the church, a broken-hearted Jimmy guns his engine in a painful cry. The woman he loves will never be his. During the filming of East of Eden, the people who work with Jimmy feel that he is going to be a big star. However, until the picture is released, Jimmy's talent will remain generally unknown, even to former Hollywood photographer Frank Worth. The first time I met Jimmy Dean was in the parking lot at uh, Schwab's drugstore in Hollywood. I'm, everybody knows the famous Schwabadero. I uh, then found out that he was an actor. And I didn't know too much about him then, but he, he was a nice guy, really a nice kid. He looked like not an out-of-work actor, but a struggling young kid trying to make his way in the business. And one day, I said to him, uh, I thought I'd like to help people once in a while, if I can 